Hey guys, I've got another problem request here. So the problem asks us to find the shear force and the bending moment at C. It gives us some relevant dimensions and some load intensity. So we have a distributed load on top. This is a solid mechanics problem. And we're going to follow a step-by-step -step procedure for finding our shear force and our bending moment. Starting with one, we create a free body diagram. Then we do some statics and find uh, some of the forces in X and Y. Then we make cuts at places of interest, so at C in this problem. And then we write equations for our distributed load, Q of X, our shear, V of X, and our moment, M of X. And so what this little diagram shows here is that integrating the negative distributed load gives you the shear force, and then integrating once more gives you the bending moment which is why it says area on top. Integrating gives you area and then differentiating gives you slope. Just don't forget that pesky negative sign in front of the distributed load. And so to check our answer, uh, there's two things we can do is that check for point forces creating jumps in V of X. That would be like these external forces that are created from these hinges here. And then also that moments, external moments create jumps in M of X. And in this problem we don't have any external moments. Uh, However, this check isn't going to be applied for this problem because the problem doesn't ask us to create a graph of the shear force and bending moment. Just remember that for other problems. And then number two is that the bending moment is zero at the free ends, like on this example, like here and here. And the reason for this is because if you were to zoom in on this very end of the beam there, there couldn't be a moment internal because there's nothing else to cancel out that moment. Since it's supported by a hinge, it's free to rotate there, so there's no external moment there to cancel an internal moment. And then the same thing applies here where we don't even have a support, it's just freely floating, so of course there's no external moment that would cancel an internal one. And the problem mentions a positive convention, which is important. Uh, whenever you make cuts, you're going to follow this sign convention here where your shear force is going down on the right and your bending moment is uh, creating a right hand positive and then on the left it's this and so here's some examples of the cuts these squiggly, line, squiggly lines are the cuts so let's follow the steps and start creating our free body diagram just drawing the beam and this will call force B from that support and this will be force D Then we've got this distributed load. I'm going to break that up into a rectangle and a triangle because those shapes will make it easier to work with. So up above we've got this rectangle here. Now let's add our relevant lengths of 2 meters here. Okay, so for determining the max force in our separate shapes, Okay, so overall, this height here is given as 10 kilonewtons, but since we have this rectangle on the bottom that's 2.5 kilonewton that's, that forms the base, this height right here of the triangle is only 7.5. Okay, so now we need to find an equation for our distributed load. And so the rectangle is easy. That's just 2.5 times x. Right, because this is kilonewtons per meter. This is a rate. And so there's 2.5 kilonewtons at a single point, but it's distributed, so we have to take the area to find out the total force. So our rectangle is 2.5x, and the top triangle is a little trickier. We know at the far left side we have 7.5, and we're going to set our x going in this direction. And so at the end, it's 0, so let's start off with 7.5 and we need to subtract something times x well 7.5 to get it to 0 and then times x so if we divide x by the length of the beam then whenever x is equal to the length of the beam it'll be 1 and we'll have 7.5 minus 7.5 and get 0 as expected so let's move these up over here to the top and get started doing our equilibrium. First we want to find what the total force of each of these distributed loads is and where it's applied. 
So for the rectangle, it's easy. It's applied right in the middle. And it's just the area, so 2.5 times 10.2, we have 25.5. And then for the triangle, the centroid is one-third of the length from the highest point. And so we know that this is 10.2 divided by 3, or just 3.4. And the total force is relatively easy to find as well. You just take 7.5 times the length, find the area of the rectangle, and divide it by 2. So divide it all by 2, and we get 38.25. OK, now we can uh, balance our forces. OK, so you may have noticed that I didn't include the x component of the unknown force on this hinge. And that's because I just foresaw that there was nothing else to balance out in the x direction so it had to be zero but sorry for leaving that out if you guys caught that so we'll start with just f of y since there is no f of x and we've got negative 38.25 minus 25.5 plus our fb and plus our fd equals zero and so now we have one equation two unknowns so we need another one and we'll take some of the moments about d and I choose that because we're going to be making cut here since we want point C. And since we're taking everything from the left, FD is not going to be involved at the end. So we can just cut it out. We don't need to solve for it. So let's take the moment around D. Following the right hand rule, we have a positive 38.25. Uh, don't be confused here, even though I put this arrow right above this one. Uh, they are not at the same distance, so this is actually uh, 6.8. Then another positive moment, 25.5 times 5.1. Sorry, I'm running out of room here. Uh, now we have a negative moments, uh, unknown FB times 8.2, and that is it. So that's all equal to zero. So doing some quick algebra, we have FB positive, because we moved it over, equals 38.25 times 6.8 plus 25.5 times 5.1, all divided by 8.2. And that equals 47.58. So now that we have our unknown FB, we have all of the forces on this side which encapsulates the C that we're looking for. And so we can begin to cut it and find out the shear and bending moment. So let's take our cut at this point here. Now remember that whenever you make a cut, it is only valid for a certain range of that beam. And that range that it's valid for is determined by the external forces that are applied to the beam. And so in this case, we have FB applied here and FD applied here. And so if we wanted to find out information about the internal forces here, our cut on this point next to C would not be valid for the forces over here. Know what I mean? Okay, yeah, but let's take our cut and draw out our beam with the relevant force applied. And we also have our distributed and then now we follow the positive convention from the beginning of the video we have v of x down and we have m of x going positive right hand okay now remember to the beginning of the video when I said that v of x is equal to the integral of negative q of x so we're going to make use of this fact and just integrate our distributed forces to find out our shear force. And the reason why this equation works is simply because of two things. One, whenever we wrote these equations, if you'll recall, we made them positive even though the arrows are pointed downward. We ignore the direction. And so we have to make this negative because the arrows are pointed downward when we look at our free body diagram. And secondly, if you recall back to whenever we solved our statics problem with, the, with uh, finding the equilibrium of the forces, 
To find the total force of the distributed force, we just found the area. And that's all an integral really is, is just the area of that function. And so without just following this rule here blindly, you can think of it logically like that. But I'm a lazy engineer, so I'm just going to quickly do this. Negative, first I'll do the uh, top triangle, 7.5 minus 7.5x over 10.2 close parentheses then we've got a minus 2.5x and then we've also got this FB coming upward and if you ever get confused about what was well, the V of X on this side of the equation or this side you can look at it just like a statics problem if all of these were on the same side we would make V of X negative and everything would equal zero but whenever you move V of X over then v of x becomes positive. And that's another reason why you need to follow the positive sign convention. It just keeps everything uh, consistent. Oops, I forgot a integral sign here. Okay, and then that is equal to negative 7.5 add an x minus 7.5 square it and then throw down a 2 here minus 2.5x squared, throw the 2 down, and then plus fb, throw an x in, since it's a constant. And I forgot a close bracket here. Okay, then we have the moment of x is equal to the integral of this now, so take the integral one more time. So 7.5x squared divided by 2, that needs to be a dot, minus 7.5 x cubed divided by 10.2 times 2 times our new 3, hello 3, 2.5 x cubed divided by 2 times 3 plus f b, x is now integrated to x squared divided by 2. And I forgot to close bracket again. Okay, I just realized that I made a very common mistake, and hopefully me making this mistake prevents you from making it again, or making it at all. Remember that whenever we're taking the moment, it's happening at our cut. It's happening right here. If we call this uh, the end of x, let's just call it, no, okay, let's, let's call it g. I don't know why. We're calling it g. So we're taking the moment about g. If we introduce this force fb, then the distance that it creates that moment is our distance x minus 2 if our x starts from here. And so I can't just integrate external forces from our shear to get to moment. This is not correct. We have to introduce this negative 2 to account for the fact that it's not applied at the beginning of the beam. Okay, I just realized that this mistake goes further than I thought. I integrated my external force going from uh, my distributed load to my shear. Big no-no. So we should not have this x here. And that means that once we go from shear to moment, we only introduce an x. So I'm going to write you a little note here to put in your cheat sheet. Sorry, real quick, this is x minus 2. Okay, so here's the note. Remember, do not integrate external forces whenever you're using this rule up here. And determine the moment by hand for external forces. Okay, so now we can plug in the location of C into these two equations and find out our shear at C and our moment at C. And I trust that you can plug these equations into the calculator perfectly fine, so I did it myself and I have V of 8.2 meters is equivalent to negative 73.25. And shear is just a force and so what did the original problem so we're working with kilonewtons so that's negative 73.25 kilonewtons and then for the moment at 8.2 meters we have negative 120.31 kilonewton meters because it's a moment there's a distance involved